this is my spring fill loaded. In this video, I will be removing the main spring housing with the internal locking system and we'll replace it with the Ed Brown flat housing drop in Magwell. I also purchased a separate spring kit for it. The kit comes with the 24 pound spring, a main spring cap, a cap pin, and the small retaining pin that goes in this hole on the main spring housing to hold all the internal parts inside. Also, before we remove the main spring housing, I suggest that you get a rubber band to apply pressure on your grip safety. This will apply pressure on the sear spring and it will prevent it from moving once you remove the main spring housing. So let's go ahead and get started. Off camera to save some time, I went ahead and removed my grips. Depending on the type of grips you have, you may not have to remove it just as long as you have access to your retaining pin here on the left side of the frame. Also to save some time, I went ahead and wrapped my grip safety with this rope to apply pressure on the sear spring once we remove the mainspring housing. You'll also need a 3 30 second punch and some type of a soft hammer. Here's your retaining pin. Remove that, put that away so you don't lose it. Pull out your push, your punch, and then remove the main spring housing. And that's your sear spring right there. With this grip safety engage, it prevents it from moving. This is the original mainspring housing. Comes with this mainspring cap, spring, and cap pin. And this is the aftermarket spring kit I purchased. There's a big difference in length with the spring. You don't need to purchase a separate spring kit for it. You can use this original internal parts that came with this mainspring housing on this new Magwell. It'll perfectly fit inside. Let's go ahead and get started with the assembly of this mainspring housing. First you need to put in the cap pin and then the spring. And then your mainspring cap. This is a tricky part putting this small retaining pin inside this hole while applying pressure on this mainspring cap downwards. Just get a punch, push down on top of this mainspring cap while putting this small retaining pin on this hole on the side of the main spring housing and that will lock the internal parts inside the main spring housing all right let's go ahead and put this magwell inside the frame of the gun all right all we need to do now is slide this magwell drop in magwell into the frame of the gun. The notch is here on the side. Slide right into the grooves there on your frame.
get your retaining pin get your punch gently tap it in and now you can remove your rubber band or your rope Now that we have the magwell installed, let's do a quick function test on it. I have two magazines here. This one's the original magazine that came with the pistol. It doesn't have this extended butt pad like this one here. So it may be a little bit difficult inserting this magazine. You may need to use a thumb or your finger insert the magazine completely inside the magwell rack your slide make sure it locks in place with the magazine inside the empty magazine it does release the magazine it comes out freely let's try this other magazine with the butt pad on it as you can see it's much easier to insert inside the magwell same thing Drop the magazine, it drops out freely. Insert the magazine, release the slide, rack the slide, it locks back in place. Drop the magazine, it comes out freely. It's a good function test. All we need to do now is reinstall my grips. I have my grips reinstalled on the gun. It sits flush with the magwell, so flat bottom grip. I think it looks really good with this magwell. It sits flush. It's almost identical with the mainspring housing with the magwell pre-installed on most 1911s by Springfield. It makes it easier to reinsert your magazine with this new drop-in magwell. Also, this is a 25 LPI checkering. It's aggressive, but not as aggressive as the checkering on the 1911s by Springfield. This is my Springfield TRP operator. As you can see there, it's, uh, it's also a 25 LPI checkering. The Ed Brown mainspring housing is a little bit lighter in color, not by much. You can't really tell unless you put it under direct sunlight and look at it very closely. Also, the Ed Brown Magwell, it ends a little bit short, about an eighth inch shorter. As you can see here, it ends there and it leaves this gap. Compared to the Springfield 1911 TRP operator, the Magwell ends all the way to the edge of the checkering of the front strap. This is also my TRP 1911 by Springfield. Again, the magwell is pre-installed on this TRP ends all the way at the bottom of this edge on the front strap. You have to remember that this Ed Brown magwell is universal. It'll fit different 1911 brands. So with that being short, I don't really mind. I think it's still a good buy. It's still a really good fit. No fitting required. 
other than the slight, very light color variation. It's a quick install. I like it. It's easy to put your magazine inside this magwell. It still looks good on the gun. The color of the magwell matches the color of the frame and the slide. Again, if you're considering on purchasing this Ed Brown drop in magwell, go ahead and do so. You won't be disappointed. You don't need to purchase a separate spring kit for it. You can use the original internal parts that's inside this mainspring housing from your 1911 and use it on this magwell by Ed Brown. It'll work perfectly okay. Once again, thanks for watching. Hope the video helped. If you're considering on purchasing this Ed Brown Magwell, go ahead and do so. I purchased it on, uh, I purchased it from Brownells. This is a part, the packaging I should say, and that's a part number, 818F25. Thanks for watching.